Hello learners. In today's session, we'll be discussing three primary, three primary ratios, which are related to liquidity ratios. In our first session of ratio, we did discuss various kind of ratio, which included liquidity, profitability, gearing, and efficiency. That's where one part which we did not discuss was about receivable turnover, payable turnover, and inventory turnover. The reason we are having separate session for that, these three ratios are very, very significant for a company to understand the working capital cycle. Before I move to typical ratios, let me just explain what is the meaning of working capital, what is the working capital cycle, and where in this cycle these three ratios falls in. Let's try to understand working capital first. Formula wise, working capital is equal to current assets minus current liabilities. This particular formula, current assets minus current liability, will tell us how to calculate the working capital. What is the significance of working capital? Working capital is a capital which is required for day-to-day -day needs. A business needs money for buying the raw material, manufacturing it and then selling it. There is always a time gap involved when the company sell and when the company receives cash. During that period, they need money and that's what we call working capital. So working capital is a capital which is required for day-to-day -day working of the business. And the formula is current assets minus current liabilities. Now once we understand the formula of working capital, let's try to understand what is the meaning of cash cycle. There is a cycle which can be called cash cycle operating cycle or working capital cycle. All three are name of the same thing about the cycle which we shall be discussing now. Let's see what is it. A business has cash in hand. With cash they will be buying raw material from raw material, it will get converted into work in process. The work in process will get converted into finished goods. The finished goods will get converted into sales. The sale will get converted into accounts receivable and accounts receivable again will get converted into cash. There is one more angle of this, payable. When you have cash, you pay to the creditors too. Let's try to understand it. A business invests cash in raw material. It takes time for raw material to get converted into finished goods. The mid part is called work in process, WIP. After WIP it gets converted into finished goods, finished goods gets converted into sale and sales get converted into account receivable or debtor and then again debtor gets converted into cash. When a company has cash, they make payment to the creditors too and that's what's called payable. This cycle is called working capital cycle. The shorter this cycle, better it is. Longer it is, problematic for the business. Reason being, let's see where we can shorten this particular operating cycle. Let's talk about raw material first. If a business buys too much of raw material, the raw material which is not even required for production, they definitely block their resources into raw material. So if we want to shorten this cycle, try to shorten this cycle first. Only buy the raw material which is required. This particular concept is called just-in-time, GIT. 
we will be discussing this concept of JIT in other sessions but here I am just giving a clue that JIT can be very useful technique when company only buys the raw material as and when they require it. Once the raw material is purchased, try to convert raw material into finished goods fast. The more you take, the more time will it take to recover the money back. So shorten your operating cycle, shorten your production cycle so that raw material will quickly get converted into finished goods. Many a times companies buy raw material and the raw material is still in the warehouse for very long time. It never gets converted into production. In order to convert this faster, the moment you get receive, you receive the raw material, try to convert into production. Once this cycle is shortened, we come to sales point. Once the goods are manufactured, try to sell it quickly. Here your marketing techniques comes into picture. Also, company should only make those goods which are having demand in the market. If company makes too many products without having demand in market, they may not be able to sell it. That's why here also company should be a little particular that they only make those many goods which are required in the market. Once the sales is done, it's time for us to follow up for money. Make sure your debtors pay the debt on time. If they will not pay, you will never be able to recover the cash. And that's where our operating cycle will never get fulfilled. So here we shall try to recover the money as quickly as we can. At the same time, try to pay to the creditor a little late, provided it's mutually agreed. So ideally, a company should have shorter period for debtors and longer period for payables. Vice versa, it will be a cash crunch situation. A business is not able to recover money, but they are paying fast. But as I said before, company should mutually agree with creditor that they will be paying in this time. If company will not agree with payable, and started paying them late, it can damage the goodwill of the company. Now, I hope we understand this picture. Now, let's try to understand three ratios which can be useful in this cycle. The first ratio is called inventory, turnover ratio. As the name suggests, the inventory turnover ratio says sales, let's be precise, cost of goods sold divided by average inventory. The cost of goods sold divided by average inventory, this ratio will give us inventory turnover ratio. How do we calculate average inventory? It is opening inventory plus closing inventory divided by 2. That will give us average inventory. Please remember that inventory turnover ratio is calculated on cost of goods sold, not on sale. Your inventory is not directly linked to the sale. It is primarily linked to cost of goods sold. That's where we use this ratio, cost of goods sold divided by average inventory. The significance of this ratio is, it will tell us how much is the inventory you have purchased and how much is getting converted into production. The larger it is, problematic it is. Shorter it is, better it is. Connected to this, we can also calculate one more ratio which says inventory turnover period. Now, this ratio will tell us how much time does it take to convert the raw material 
into production. Larger it is, problematic it is. Shorter it is, better it is. The formula will be reverse of what we discussed here. So, average inventory divided by cost of goods sold multiplied by 365. As this ratio is dealing with days, it has to be multiplied by 365. So, we have taken inventory turnover ratio, reversed it and multiplied it with 365. This ratio will tell us how long does it take to recover, how long does it take to convert the raw material into production. As we discussed, shorter it is, better it is. So that is about inventory turnover ratio. Once we understood the inventory turnover ratio, let's try to understand the second ratio which says receivable turnover ratio. The formula is credit sale divided by average receivables. How do we calculate average receivable? Opening plus closing receivable divided by 2. This gives us average receivable. So the formula is credit sale divided by average receivable. What is the significance of this ratio? This ratio will tell us how much is the percentage of debtors over your credit sale. Higher it is, problematic it is. Shorter it is, better it is. Connected to this, let's try to understand the receivable turnover days. So we will reverse this formula. Average receivable divided by credit sale multiplied by 365. This ratio will tell us how long does it take to recover money from debtors. Ideally, company should able to recover the money from debtor fast. If it is too high, that means company is not having very efficient collection policy. Also, please remember that in this formula, we will only use credit sale. This will not be calculated on total sale. Receivables are linked to credit sale, not cash sale. So ideally, we should only calculate this on credit sale. I hope we are clear about this ratio also. Let's move to the third ratio, which says payable turnover ratio. This formula is credit purchase divided by average payable. This ratio will tell us if we purchase this much, how much do we owe? How much is our liability to pay to the creditor? If we have to calculate the days for it, we will reverse this formula and it will become average purchase, sorry, average payable divided by credit purchase multiplied by 365. This ratio will tell us how long does it take to repay. Ideally, this should be little longer, provided it is mutually agreed. Now, let's see all these three ratio once again. Inventory turnover ratio deals with inventory part, 
how long does it take to recover how long does it take to get production uh, how long does it take the material to get converted into production the receivable turnover ratio says how quickly you can recover the money from debtors and payable ratio tells us how long does it take to repay coming back to our working capital cycle the first ratio inventory turnover ratio is linked to this part so from cash till finished goods we are talking about inventory turnover ratio we can calculate the inventory turnover ratio for raw material wip and finished goods separately as well the second ratio receivable turnover ratio was dealing with this part and the payable ratio was dealing with this part now i hope we can correlate the working capital cycle to the ratios we discussed that will give you deeper understanding of the concept of liquidity so that's all about today's session i'll see you soon for the next class till then stay tuned take care